Hello everybody, this is the Shane Duggan Show podcast. It's Monday the 16th of September and my very special guest today is the Leander Dan Mo Dunford. Hey Shane, how's it going? How are you doing, bye? I'm, I'm doing story. good, I'm doing good. So, everyone. <laughs> how are you? I'm good, yeah. <laughs> this, this all came about, I was out Saturday with my brother and his friends and I got chatting to Mo and his uncle Liam Stack out in the smoking area of Maisie's Bar. Yes. And I asked Mo, would he come on the podcast? Obviously, this is my first, uh, he's my first ever guest, and what a, what a serious guest to get. Pleasure um, to be here, man. Thank you very Pleasure much. Pleasure to be here. I thought um, he would say, what the fuck are you on about? Go, go away, young flan. <laughs> you, you, wait, you waited until I had a few drinks in me until you asked Oh, yes, I did. <laughs> yeah, there was a, there was a minute to my madness. But there's, no, a fa- um, there's a fellow in the smoking area who keeps looking at me. <laughs> you giving me the side eye. <laughs> no, um, geez. I like We're delighted to have you. How's things anyway? How are you doing? I'm doing good. Yeah? I'm doing good. Good. I'm getting um, the odd sense of deja vu, though. Yeah, I know what you mean, yeah. <laughs> Go on, tell him. You I have think, to. Go on. I think I am, too. Go so, on. um... <laughs> Yeah, we recorded <laughs> we recorded the podcast and uh, we were just finishing up there and whatever happened, I don't know, but we had a malfunction with the phone anyway, so uh, this is take two. Hopefully it'll be better now this time, but sure, look, and hopefully the phone won't go fucking bonkers again. Please don't. You cost me enough money. <laughs> but yeah, where will we turn to? I suppose... Here, this is a lovely room. Yeah? Yeah, I like the colour. Lovely room. Jeez. Mm, like that now in a good way. Yeah? Um, yeah. Mother painted it white. Thank you, Mary. Tis a, tis a nice turquoise green for, yeah. for those of you listening at home. Yeah. Uh, some of the listeners might have been in the room before. <laughs> Friends, of course. Um, yeah, so you're a young man like myself. Obviously, you're after making a big now in the in the acting game. Um, only just recently watched one of your films on Netflix, Michael Inside. Yeah. Uh, phew, what a... Vicious, vicious character. How, like, how, how did you find playing him? Well, do you know what? I I love that job, um, and sometimes, sometimes you're doing something that it, it feels like more than just a job, you know, because the people you're working with and the subject matter, and um, I suppose I was lucky in a sense that I'd done four or five years in Vikings, and then when I was good show, yeah, uh, yeah, very, uh, really. Pleased to be on it for so long, you know. How many seasons was there in that mo? Um, altogether, I think there was altogether. I think there's six seasons. I th- I did I did four, four or five or four, um. But it was nice that the job prospects weren't, you know, I I was uncertain about them when I came out of Vikings, from such a big budget show, having done um, having done I suppose a a socially conscious movie with Patrick's Day. So I was I was glad that. Frank, the writer, asked me to be part of Michael Inside. I mean, I was I was really chuffed with that, and um, I was chuffed to be working. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, obviously a hard game to be in. Yeah, but the um, there goes the phone again. There goes the phone. <laughs> I'm gonna keep an eye on this phone. And I wouldn't mind like it's the one it's the one time I'm doing something. Other times there'd be nobody fucking snapping me. Nobody <laughs> wants to talk. To. Here we'll snap him back there. You know. Um, yeah, we will soon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but come here. Um, yeah, I, I was I proud of that film, the way it was made, the way it was shot, and the work that went into it. Um, Frank Berry was a teacher. We were chatting a little bit about our teachers there. Yeah, yeah. And um, Frank Berry was a teacher, and like he was a really well loved man by his students. He taught film, and he's from around the area, um, and he's very familiar with the area that he was writing in. Uh, an area I I wouldn't really be familiar with. Like we're at Dungarvan. Um, by God we this, are. We, by God we Born are. and raised. By Jesus. <laughs> but, um, but he wrote about this area in Killing Arden in Talla and he cast the young fella, David Flynn, and in the movie before it cast him and the girl, Jordan Jones. And I was just really glad that um, I got to work with these two young actors. I worked worked with David when he was like 16 and he plays Michael. And then I got Obviously a very talented a actor. Beautiful man. Really talented, really subtle. Knew the character, and had done a movie with Frank before, and um, in a, I suppose, um, I suppose in a in a in an almost similar way to myself, I, um, Frank was a bit of a mentor to him, like like Terry McMahon was a mentor to me, 
and when you have that rock and again with that guiding influence that we were chatting about that one person who to believe in you who believes in you and you can see them and you know that if you're going to fall that they're going to catch you which doesn't always happen uh, I was just I was delighted after my time in Vikings that I, I could experience that I could see it through that I could watch David experience that so I did about five days in it but again it's well you just you worked in that film for just five days yeah yeah David did about four weeks and I came in on the last week and they had shot up and around Dublin and I just so you know finished uh, I did Vikings and I think I did a little five days in a horror movie up in Wexford then I was having a great old time yeah you were I was having a great old time yeah and, very, uh, very bu- it must have been a very busy time for I was more. glad of the work I'll put it to you that way yeah, yeah because you know when you come straight out of something like that and you hadn't done many movies you, you kind of want to get back in so you weren't really you weren't idle for long more um, not not after not after Vikings, um, but trust me, I know what it's like to be idle. Oh yeah, hey. but uh, yeah, we we shot that up in Cork, the old Cork prison, and uh, it was the first real time I I shot a movie where I felt, even though the, even though the so- story and the subject matter was really heavy, um, it was nice to be not far away from home. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, just we, you know, an hour or so. We well. were up in the Blarney Golf bloody place and we were shooting there in the prison during the day and a lot of the background actors were ex pathways uh program so they were all ex prisoners and they actually frank workshopped the script of michael inside with these ex prisoners so he would say so what would it be like on any given day what would you do um Jeez, I can like the where work would you store the phones the work that went into that moment must have been extraordinary what posters would be on the wall uh where would you hang out um, how do you not draw attention to yourself so these lads who I got to meet and I got to work with and I got to know it was only a week but these beautiful men these fathers who you know, for, for whatever reason in life they'd, they'd ended up and wound up in that predicament and they really just well and truly wanted to make this movie by the way gained uh, trusted Frank because he gained their trust and vice versa and he really wanted to make it so that some young fellow watching or some girl watching well, see that film and maybe not go down the path they went down. So whew, that that was a blessing for me. So in many ways, that film can be educational as well. I I definitely look at that as an educational movie, one hundred percent. But I'm not so. There's always a but, isn't there? As oh we learned from God. as we learned from our chat earlier. Mm. <laughs> but the the term educational movie, yeah. If. You and me and the Christian brothers and Anthony Kenny wheels in that old unit with the combi TV set and goes, right, lads, I'm going to show you an educational movie. We all, what do we do? Fall asleep, probably. Uh, yeah. The difference between this movie, yeah, it is an educational movie, but I think it's a really finely crafted film. Oh, I, it is. It, there's such a powerful story behind it. Yeah, and the way it's shot, it, I think it's influenced by, like, world class indie movies and, and European films while being I, I think it's one of the best Irish films out there you know, I do. one thing I have to ask you more and uh, <laughs> I said that uh, Paul Hulan a good friend of mine had a question for you ah you said, Paul great man and you great said man. no problem Paul is on the ball yep and he wants to know would you have liked to have been in Love Hate <laughs> that's a really good question it is. That's a good question. I was I, expecting a different, I, different kind of question. I was expecting a different question too. Yeah. I'm there going, ah, great man, please be a good question. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was going to be, what the fuck do you do when your day is off? <laughs> How many women have you shagged? Yeah. Like that. yeah. <laughs> 44, can, but don't tell anyone. I can see him now in the home going, keep asking him that question. Keep asking him that. That's a better question. <laughs> So we'll go with the first question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, we might get to the second one eventually. Oh, no, we'll then see. the third, we'll see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, share, we'll share war stories. Um, I would, Paul. I would have, um, especially at a time when a, a show of that had not been seen on on screens. And I think it took everybody by surprise, you know. Um, I, just, I remember watching every Sunday at yeah. ha- half nine. and Half nine. Yeah. Just... Iconic! What what a show! What the characters in that show as well, Nidge. Yeah. Tommy. Yeah. Friend, friend, the man. Friend, the man. Him. It became a bit of a phenomenal yeah. phenomenon. Phenomen- a phenomenal phenomenon. Very good. <laughs> like, <laughs> marmalade. Marmalade. <yeah. laughs> My man, um, P. 
is it Peter Coonan yeah. that played friend. Yeah. Funnily enough, he was actually in creation one night a few years ago. He was. And he didn't take too kindly to being called friend. Well, do you know what? I understand that. Yeah. And I think Peter's a friend of mine. I've done three jobs with Peter. Uh, he's a, fi- a fine actor. One thing I have to ask you: Do you think? Did you you didn't see the last uh, series? Did you? When did when did you start watching? Like I the, I watched. I tell you when it was. I I saw season one. I saw a bit of season two, and what I thought was the pinnacle. Now I haven't seen season four or five. Sorry now, but for me, season three, fantastic, world class, yeah, brilliant storytelling, brilliant writing, brilliant characters. About Charlie Murphy playing Siobhan was fantastic. Uh, Tom Vaughan Lawler, I, I, I just I thought the whole storyline the cast had, they had never been better. Charlie Murphy played Siobhan. I think her name was Siobhan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Black hair. Nidge's um niece. She's oh, is a good, that it? She, she's a good friend of yours. Oh, she's a friend of mine. Uh, 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 she's a really good person and a uh, mighty actor. She was in the year above me in college. Um, she's a Wexford girl, would you believe? Strawberries. <laughs> strawberries <laughs> she's a strawberry girl <laughs> she's, a good, she's, a, she's a good she's a yeah, strawberry girl <laughs> one thing I always found most peculiar about that you don't mind me this is season 5 you haven't seen season 5 yet you don't mind me asking you a question hang, about it hang yeah. on now let me get back to Peter Coonan and oh creation. yeah sure yeah let me get on to that creation's not the place you want to be if you know if you're if you're not from if you're if you're an actor if you're on the screen because you get every fucking fella Bombed at 2 o'clock in the morning going yeah it's just, you know what I mean, and the, the the irony of it is, I know Peter, and do you know what Peter chats to me about all the time? Don Garham, I shit you not. Oh, yeah. Peter used to come down and do basketball camp in the Friary every year. He knows on Ryan so well, he's a Gale Gore, he loves ring. He came down to play basketball, and he, every time he meets me, he's all, the one thing he asks for is always Don Garham. Now, he never said, I went into creation and they're all slagging. I'm sure he got a lot of that being in love hate, but you know, people. To be honest, people can be kind of inconsiderate just because they don't know any better. And especially after a few drinks. Yeah, they they just don't know any better. I've got it myself when I was out, and I I, I you know I. And you're probably still going to continue to get it more because it's only kind of from the sounds and looks of things, it's only bigger and bigger. Your name is getting out there now. You know, you're you're nearly a household name at this stage now. Well, you know, there's just there's some places you don't call to at a certain time of night and. I'm I'm lucky in I'm lucky in that regard. I'm I'm from here, born and raised here. I'm yeah. sa- I, you know I'm people are sound, but I just want to. I'd like to draw people's attention to the flip side of the coin there. That every yeah, Fran, 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 Fran. Every one of those they do at two, three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> you know they don't know. Is, he actually thinks this place is class, and he'd love to meet every one of them on, on at their level. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, not <laughs> ten Jaeger bombs later. No, and I've been there. Do you know what I mean? I know yeah, it's yeah. like, jeez, it's 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 funny. People, us Irish people, I did this ad years ago. It blew up ten years ago, but only certain people they'll never congratulate you on the good news, but they'll be the first ones to bring you down on the time that something wasn't received well. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, fuck them. Hey, isn't it? Exactly. Exactly. One very, very, very important question as you've grown up in, you're like, you're the Ungarvan by true and true. Where would you get the nicest chicken fillet roll? Oh, man. Quick pick. Yeah. Without a doubt. Yeah, definitely. Since I've been a young fillet, quick pick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I went in and tried the, the new place. The blue door. The blue door. Chicken fillet rolls are just as good. Yeah, same. Yeah, yeah. They're just as good. What'd you get on? Oh, uh, I go for butter and sometimes I go for mayo and butter. And the plain breaded chicken, cheese, lettuce, sweet corn. Drive down to Quan's. Munch away. <laughs> Hopefully I wouldn't be on my own when I'm driving down to Quan's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hopefully we met me. Say, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, fuck. We used to race down there at lunchtime. Oh, the queues were unbelievable, but yeah. Race down there. The good crack. Where would, would be a close, where would be a close second in your heart? For what? Um, for Phil? For, no, for the best chicken fillet roll in Dungarvan. A close second. Um. The SO service station out on the Waterford Road there do great Jeez, chicken fillet It's a long time since that was SO. <laughs> I don't know. Well, what is it now? Or maybe it is SO. You know, no, so you're, you're probably you're, right. You're on about Kula. Kula. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're probably right. Yeah, 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 good pick out of there as well. <laughs> and if you had to go to like a pub, like obviously I know I met you in Maisie Saturday night. Funnily enough, that was my first time in Maisie's. 
if you were going for a pub with a few of your buddies there, I like these questions we can talk about make sure yeah we can talk about this all day yeah um, if I was to go out for a pint yeah yeah I, I honestly would like once I have a pint in my hand I don't care where I am but you the, might have a preference talk about Maisie's right I I don't go up there a lot because I'm not home a lot but I always yeah. try to make a point there's a good friend of mine Kevin he's always mad about going up there I'm always mad about going up there I really like Tony Brown and his brother and Lark Owen from Ring who works behind the bar and I like Was to, he working there Saturday night? He was yeah oh, I know what to see Lovely lad uh, and you know I like to uh, give the lads a bit of business I think they're good and it's just a slightly different uh, pub different environment to yeah. what we're used to and I think that's always healthy um, any time I've been in there I'd have a good crowd uh, a good time and actually because you went in there about half a dozen of your mates yeah well my brother and all his friends your bro- but yeah, yeah, yeah. But all your mates yeah and Brian Donovan and all them it's it great to it's see Brian Brian Donovan boy oh, so man does ride that big lorry oh. do you have him on Snapchat no no I don't I no. highly recommend it I'm not on Snapchat oh for obvious reasons yeah sorry <laughs> <laughs> but um but uh, you went into the snug in Maisie's and I saw it. It was nice. There's a nice little... Nice little crew assembling there. Do you know what I mean? There's <laughs> yeah. like, the, I, I, like, I like the I like the, the atmosphere in the place. And then I, when I'm seeing my mates, I go down to Downey's, uh, uh, John McGrath and Mark there, and uh, I go down to Marie in the Moorings and Emmeline and Mary's and maybe the four pubs I go to. I fell to own Downey's, but he's some size of an oars left. Huh? <laughs> What's his name? Who's the one who's down? He's John who? John. John McGrath. Some nose left. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> I actually, that's where I started off the other night. The back yeah. is, is very good to watch um, soccer matches, hurling you know, matches, boxing. You, you'd have no bother now that this podcast is going out and this podcast becomes very successful and uh, so you'll go into Downey's one, <laughs> one time for a pint. Oh yeah. And he'll serve you and then he'll, he'll eat it. And he'll go, what do you say about my <laughs> Fuck you, Duggan. You're the cunt. You called me a big... Yeah, that's shut up. You know what I mean? It is what it is. It's not a... And it's funny enough, Saturday Night Con, there are two pubs I've rarely been is... Um, He's been very supportive of me, I tell you. Uh, since... Sorry, sorry, I cut in you there. Since I was... A, before acting, even when I was doing music and cover bands, he'd be very supportive. He'd bring us in and... Uh, For a gig. Let us play a few gigs in there, you know? Very good. When we were trying to get... And it, with the acting, he's been very supportive. So what were you going to say? I can't fucking remember. <laughs> <laughs> Very good long term memory. Awful, awful short term memory, to be honest with you. So, come here. Let me ask you a question. Go for it. Um, what made you want to do this? Um, the podcasting, that is. I just thought it'd be a good crack, to be honest. Yeah. 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 Um, who would I, like, I listen to the two Johnnies, Dave podcast. I get a good, good get a good buzz off that now. Um, Joe Dave, yeah, frequently have podcasts so up. Yeah, get a good buzz off that now. Yeah, so. they're good. Yeah, so something different, but yeah, nice um, one. And luckily enough, I met you Saturday night, and I, when I said like, <laughs> I was half expecting you to tell me to fuck off. I didn't actually think you. Yeah, yeah, go on. Yeah, no bother. Yeah, of course you're with Liam, your uncle Liam, someone yeah. who I know. Yeah, very, very well. And I actually mentioned this earlier when you came in. I actually couldn't believe that he was your uncle, and I didn't know about that. It's, go away. No, it's, go away. In the house, it was, it was never mentioned to go me. Go away. Liam, uh, as soon as you walked out, he goes, he gave me the wink. And I know what that wink was. He goes, make sure you do that. Because he's very fond of you. Oh, Liam is a good one. He's very fond of you. He enjoyed the chats over the years. Yeah, with yeah. You. Um, so, with that and the fact that I've met you, and I know your brother, and I knew a few of your lads there, absolute pleasure. Good people, boy. Right? Is this the first one, is it? It is indeed, oh, sir. Man. The only problem about having you on this now is it's probably all going to go downhill from here. I'll come, I'll come on again next week. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. When you're around again, you're on. Um, yeah, sure, whenever you're around again, bite, we lock horns. We're, um, you're currently living in Dublin, aren't you? Um, I am, yeah. Do you like Dublin? So my honest opinion now, before you answer that question, I fucking hate Dublin. Why it's, so, it's so vast and busy. and I like... When I'm walking the streets, you know, meet people there, have no chat or whatever. Like here, you just have fucking four hundred Chinese people walking past you with your headphones, and nobody says hello to anybody. It's just so so busy compared to Nungarvan. Like, you should try having four hundred Chinese people in Nungarvan and get used to that. Oh my that'd, god, that'd be nice. Not just Chinese, just eh, like well, I'm glad from all nationalities, it's, and nobody seems to say hello to anyone. More. It's 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 good that there's so many nationalities, right? But I. 
I totally hear what you're saying because the first time I went up there, you can I was oh, I can co- completely. Yeah. I felt like a fish out of water. I, you know, I didn't know my north from south, and I suppose what I yeah, what I wasn't used to was a lot of friends of mine, and you probably get this as well. They go, or even 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 my girlfriend goes. Why do you talk to everyone? <laughs> yeah. Do Why do you say hello to everyone and are friendly with people? And I goes, well, if they're friendly to you, I be friendly back. I like chatting to people I know in town in Dungarvan. I like having that kind of, uh, you know, I I li- like seeing old friends and characters and people working, you know, in the counters that I know are old teachers or old. That's a nice thing about being from where we're from. Yeah, and you know it's, it's true. My grandfather used to say, "God be good to him." Never forget where you come from. Hey, and you definitely haven't done it. Hey, well, you know, I remember my uncle when he'd come home and he'd he'd look for old characters and old friends. He'd be coming from England, and I remember him saying, "Jeez, I don't know anyone here. I don't know anyone here." And, and you know, that's a part of life. But it's it, and I like going around, being around town, and going, "Jeez, there's there's himself, there's herself," and I like that. What I what I I suppose what I mean is when I first went to Dublin, and I was like, "Well, how's it going? Where are you from?" That whole familiarity thing, no, non-existent. No, no. It is existent if you go to the right places, but I went to Dublin because I had to because it's where I went to to train. Yeah, it's where I went uh, when I got out of arts in UCC, and I said you went I, to acting school I applied. In yeah, I said that fifty quid up to acting school. I auditioned. I'd never auditioned for. I'd never done acting in my life. Uh, I got in and I got accepted. So I lived in Dublin. It was a two-year course full-time. And I tried to find little nooks and crannies and places where there was that kind of homely feel. Yes. Something I was used to. And by G- that does exist. There are some still the old... But are there a few and far between? The old, well, I tell you what, I'm not a dub. I've been up there 12 years now, I think. Uh, it's a long time. It is. Well, it ca- that caught up with me. Uh, is that how you met your current girlfriend? Uh, yeah, I met her. I met her uh, um, yeah. on Tinder. <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> Tinder didn't exist. When we were <laughs> you met her in Dublin, did you? I did. Yeah, yeah I did. Wicklow. Um, but I tell you, what's happening in Dublin now is all the old buildings, all of the well-known landmarks, all of the premises, the good old premises for social and arts. They're all gone. They're all gone, and they have been gone for a couple of years now. But they, I mean, with com- corporate consumeristic sort of places, um, Apple are taking over. Google are taking over. Uh, they're taking over the Docklands. Are taking over. now. This is bringing in business, yeah. But it's like every time I look at the city now, the little the ten years that I've been there, let's say, I said I'm a little bit tinged with sadness, cause. There are some great, beautiful dubs. I swear to God, Christ. And there's women like I mean, both. Oh yeah, 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 Jesus, both. And Brazilians and Chinese and everybody living up oh, there. Oh, nice Brazilian. And hey, yeah. there are some great, great people up there. But the old timers and the old ways are like visibly very quickly being taken over by corporations. You know. Yeah, I, I just think that's just the way the world has gone. Yeah, now. yeah, yeah. It is the way. Well, it's another gone. question I have for you. And we were on about this earlier. This is going to sound pretty sad, but I'm a big fan of WWE. Yes. And it's a well-known fact that wrestlers never go back and watch their work. Do you go back and watch stuff you've been in and movies, etc.? Would you go back and watch it? Wrestlers don't just... go back and watch their work. Like, they don't. Th- th- their matches. Don't, well, do they not? Ah, well, there I've has ha- to be a few. Yeah, but I'm just <laughs> I'm alluding to some, some big names that I've heard. They don't. If you were a wrestler, would you watch your own matches? I probably would, yeah. Uh, and I, I, boxers, someone... MMA fighters, they watch other people's fights the whole time and they watch their own fights to see where they went wrong. So, But wrestling is... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't, yeah no, different. man. No, um, <laughs> I, yeah, I, I have done... I've watched, I've watched my own stuff. I don't have them on repeat, no. But I say for Michael Inside and Patrick's Day, um, you, you'd go to the premiere, but... Also, if it's something like, sometimes the experience can just be enough if it's something you enjoyed, you know? Yeah. And then sometimes, if you want to see what that looks like, if the cameraman chose a certain take, 
and you want to know what take and you want to know wow he really got the focus there just spot on i never saw that before oh wow they've got a really great score composer to add a bit of music for that scene yeah or wow how they matched up your co-stars close up with your close up and how they interact all sometimes the, all i these go little things the yeah. puzzle the jigsaw sometimes i go that works you know so and you know i used to be able to watch uh myself i used to find it strange but or even cringy even to a degree yes yeah, especially if it's not great <laughs> but um it's it's good to be able to learn that so you can be a, a critic you of know your own work yeah 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 because let's be honest about it, the way the world has gone now it's going to be very easy to find a critic of it's the world in many ways now it can be so negative can't it yes yeah it, they nearly like you'll be told you did something wrong before they'll praise you for what you did right yeah and sometimes it's it's nice to just let the work go, let it go, job done. It is what it is. You were, you you were there in that moment with the other person. Great experience. Move on. Move on to the next. Because as you say, as you say, the world has become crazy, and it's a different world. And you know, I sound like our 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 parents, like what they used to say to us back in my day. We didn't have the computers. It has evolved even more so since me and you went to school. Oh, it's sick. You know, um, and there's a certainly when talking about the home homeliness and comfort we feel here to the alien big cities and the big smoke the technological age now is coming in and uh, in a big way and yeah there's there's a question mark over young people's mental health uh, there's a question mark of how much people are getting sucked into what's not real and how much they're valuing end results and quick success and likes what you said there about mental health more like even like my father there is 50 odd like he said when he was growing up very 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 few people like would have committed suicide and like unfortunately today like it's nearly a regular occurrence and more often than not it's it's men to, to who are doing it like and i totally agree with you about the social media like it's nearly as if the more likes you get the better person you are which is completely untrue but it, it, it is just the way the world is gone but the danger is when someone makes himself believe that that's the truth and the only truth that if I didn't get as many likes as I got the other day I'm after disimproving I'm after disimproving and then my self worth has gone down and I'm ugly and I don't like myself as much because I'm not getting as many likes as I did the other day or when I'm not getting as many likes as this person when, and person when my her. when my friend Johnny is getting all the likes or Sandra is getting all the likes for her b- bikini picture and I'm not go on Sandra go on Sandra <laughs> well he's grand the only way you're, you're <laughs> yeah go I on, know Sandra. what you mean um, I'd have to I have to ask do you ever see yourself moving back to Dungarden more well you have to leave first and I, I I've always been coming back you know what I mean and yeah yeah and but on a more full time basis I mean like I I'd come back when I'm away long enough yeah yeah and what I mean by that is I've I, I've been going where the work is and I love going home and I have you know that's that school across there in St. Mary's I'm, I'm still friends and close with those same guys that I met in junior infants senior infants but time is obviously changing that because they're setting it down their families and they don't want to be listen to me rambling on, on yeah, their yeah. weekends all the time. They've better things to do. But making babies, etc. There you go. There you go. But um, I yeah, I it's always been on my mind because I I love it down here, um, and I I love bringing my son down here, and um, does he like Don Yeah, yeah, yeah. He does. Yeah, he likes the square. Uh, <laughs> How did you know it, boy? He he likes uh, he he likes the fact that you can go not very far up the coast of the Copper Coast and you're surfing in Tremor. I like the fact that you can um, go up to to Ardmore and there's an adventure centre there. Um, what about I, the Greenway? Of I course. was glamping with him. Yeah, with the Greenway, every, everybody talks about the Greenway. The Greenway, the Greenway, the Greenway is great. Yeah, the Greenway effect. The Greenway effect. Yeah, yeah, yeah to some, geez, it's bringing a lot of people into the town, isn't it? Hmm. Some are gone. Very, very busy now. Well, we'll make sure it doesn't become the Greedway and stays the Greenway. 
Liam said that. <laughs> Liam said that That's Saturday true. night. Actually, yeah. funny you that you allude to that now. Yeah, Liam funny now because I was listening. Well, I had a conversation with Liam about this, and I thought he he put it spot on there. For yeah. anyone who doesn't know, that's Liam Steph. He's uh, Mo's uncle. Uh, he would have been played parts uh, before in Glen Row. Uh, Michael Collins. Um, what other types of work was he in, Mo? He was in so much. He did too much to mention in one night. No, <laughs> no, Liam very busy. Liam, yeah. see, Liam is known around here, and he's known that he was in Michael Collins and Glen Row. They're the two things that yeah, exactly. That's what yeah. people know from, but what others don't see is the fact that he left here when he was sixteen. He joined a drama group. He worked in so many jobs behind the scenes as well as acting in all the theatres in Dublin uh, I'm talking about being a stage hand pulling the curtains washing the floors um, gifted musician and it was an inspiration for me for here's a guy that went and did something that was unheard of when I was a kid back even when I wasn't interested in being an actor and the beautiful thing about my uncle is uh, growing up he never pandered to me or patted me on the head or was never condescending to me he always treated me like a like an adult yes I always spoke to him like an adult and he's he's almost like a brother now and I mean that genuinely my uncle Liam is like a brother and a, a close friend and I really really want to work with him I would love to do something with Liam because he's got so much insight uh, about our town Highly um, intelligent man. Oh, he is highly, highly intelligent. In, everybody's intelligent. Everybody's intelligent. Le- Liam is. Uh, uh, see, Liam doesn't judge people, and uh, he's a, he's he's gifted. My my uncle is gifted. Definitely. And, and um, he has a lot of insight for the town and stories about this town. That you know, I'd um, I'd love to work with him on. But uh, hey. I'm I'm just I'm just very proud to know him. But who knows? You could work with each other in the future. I'd love I'd love that. I'd love that. If you were in a pub or a nightclub, if you were getting a shot, what would your preferred shot be? Um, tequila. Really? Very nice. Yeah, because I don't like that Jaeger shite. No. Nah. I wouldn't. Yeah, I'd be fair. I'd be fond enough of a Jaeger bomb now. Yeah. Um, or a blue bomb. Did you drink a blue bomb. Um, a blue bomb. What's the, what? Oh Jesus! Blue after I had one of them not so long ago. Yeah, yeah. And they were strong. What about? They were strong. I had too many of those Jaegers as uh, you growing up. So yeah, bad bad memories. No, nah, just you know, it's, it's not. <laughs> I don't think it's a great drink. If I'm honest with you. And what if you were drinking a pint, bottle of cider, Heineken, Carlsberg, or what would be your go-to drink? And I like Guinness. A lot of my friends are getting on the Coors Light now. They're their fathers. They're looking after their 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 waistline. Uh, <laughs> Coors line this way away because um, it's lighter apparently um, but I like uh, like Guinness Guinness yeah mm. and obviously Davids is closed now we, creation is the only game in town at this moment in time mm. but when you were younger going out in town I'm sure Davids and creation were both open where would you where was your well, I, used to, I used to try to get into whichever one I'd, I'd, I'd get into yeah. when I was underage I used to try my chances you know yeah, yeah. whether it was in the front door or the back door or over the bridge I'd try um, just get in there one way or another yeah yeah you know I'd, I'd be fond of Davis on myself first okay thing. yeah yeah good 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 buzz yeah I haven't, I haven't been in there in a while but and uh, it's just it's closed now the last while anyway a good uh, a good late bar is good you know what I mean yeah yeah uh, I'd, minis maybe I'd, I'd like I'd, yeah I'd be good to see if Dungarvan had even a, a, another late bar as well I know obviously your um you're a spoken for men. You're in a relationship, but previous to when you weren't in a relationship, it must have been um, it must have been easy enough to pull a bureau, was it? To pull a bureau. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I went to a school with all lads. Do you yeah, know what I mean? I, 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 I had a lot of like yourself. You know, I. I so when you went to acting school, like a lot you saw of learning women in your class, you must have been like, Jesus, what the fuck? Like, it must have been. It must have been quite daunting to have women in the class with you in that acting school. I had a lot of learning to do. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of learning yeah but great. so is that a yes or a no you did find it easy to pull the oars well I learned very quickly that I wasn't allowed to call them bjors or uh, <laughs> birds <laughs> women and uh, you know I had to yeah <laughs> good fun 
the smile on your face says it all, really. Well, acting school was uh, an experience. How, how, how would I describe it? Um, uh, yeah, it was a, a crea- creative <laughs> experience. And, uh, the, I wonder if you've only the one child then, isn't it? What I got to know, uh, <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, yeah, got to, yeah. Who w- would you say was the biggest influence on your career to date? Biggest influence, influence on my career? Yeah. Um, well, there's a few. There's uh, my uh, my parents for supporting me when I said to them, Mom, Dad, i got to give up my arts thing in Cork. Or you were in UCC. I'd like to be an actor and I'd like to send off for the gaiety. I'd like to say that they're, you know... That's the acting school. Uh, yeah, yeah. They, and they said, without their... You know, they were... My father was quite practical about it. My mother really believed in me from day one. So my folks, um, the good old teachers from the CBS, the good ones, um, the ones, you know, you always have that... So much of teaching and having teachers and student life is like, it's geared towards getting uh, getting your A's. And the, I, the teachers that I kind of look back on fondly were the ones that were just a little bit quirky. Yeah. And this, characters. Yeah, characters. I mean, I had um, Mars Kuhan, um, who typically you might think wasn't so quirky, but he, he, he had his he had his ways. He believed in me. Um, Anthony mm. Kelly. Yeah, Mr. Hall never struck me as someone that was quirky. Now. Mr. Kelly, definitely, yeah. Me Hall or Keneally, yeah, Mr. Keneally and, uh, yeah, Des Feeney. Just the, if they... Uh, they Kelly and Keneally could always come up and they could support, support uh, and say you should go and do that. They do went it. to one of your premieres, you were saying, before. Yeah, they came to pa- the Patrick's Day Premier in, in Waterford. And um, it's nice getting out of school and a few years go by and you don't treat them like teachers and you, you just have them on first name basis and you say, hey, thank you for all those little moments that you did. I know I was a gobshite for a lot of it. I know I pff, but by and large, wasn't like mom, the easiest. You, they're moments you'll never forget either. Like. But uh, it's it was great to see them and Morris came through one in, in Dungarvan and... Um, um, I, as you know, it's just that nice thing of we were all brought up to be yes sir, no sir, and and we got so used to calling people sir and miss that I think there's a lot of lads who leave school and they'd still be calling them sir and miss. Yeah. Uh, was Miss Hunt there when you were there? She was. Yeah. She was tidy boy. Ah, uh, she's brilliant. Great. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Great. Great woman. Um, she's the vice principal now. That's right. Yeah. 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 That's right. Yeah. Um, the principal now is I don't even know the principal now. He's from all I know is from De La Salle. Right. Mr. Something. Don't know. It was Mr. Murphy when I was there. Yeah, Mr. Murphy. Yeah. Mr. Um, Mr. G- Ryan, Jim Ryan, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Jim Ryan. But you know, like they're uh, Yeah, you're a product of their time and there's so much to be said about oh it's a tough experience in school or oh it's a lot of hardships growing up. But really I, I didn't. I, I had a great group of mates. I I, I enjoyed being a cheeky blackguard. Yeah, I'm sure yeah. you were the same. Ah, to a degree, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to a degree, yeah. Um, Good times in school now, in fairness. Do you know? And um, you kind of, for all their ways, you you, 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 for, you, you have to be understanding in the years that followed that they, for, for their faults, they knew knew better. And we were damn lucky to have um, the school tours that we had. Fantastic. Um, Where would you have gone on them? I mean, I, I spoke to someone the other day, it was over in London, and they couldn't believe that I said I'd, I'd on a school tour I'd gone to to, to Venice, uh, Belgium, and Barcelona, and they're like, I can't believe you did that over those years. And I said, no, I, that was one year. Mr. That, Kylie, right? Mr. Kylie. Um, I, I, people might know about Kylie, but he, he, was in, he was a scout leader as well, and... Uh, I never had him because he was he was a father of of one of my best friends, who's now a teacher as well, Kevin and um, and he, Mr. Kylie actually only retired yeah the year just but gone. he like he he put so much into those school tours for for those kids to come away with the best experience possible, regardless of like the A's and the B's and what we're trying to get, 
Those tours, man, were amazing. Oh, the memories by this. Mm. They're a uh, great crack boy. Yeah, it's cool. And it's cool to see young Kevin as well has... Um, He's he's got some of that what his father had because he came down for a pint with me last week. Or yeah, two. he didn't fall far from the tree. Oh well, no, not not so much. That in that he's he's a teacher, but um, he's his own man, and uh, he went up to the Colester football team, and the lads were like, "Yeah, but you don't teach them anymore. You're teaching them Navy Dabby sport." And he goes, "Yeah, but my old students, I want to, I want to catch up with them, up them meet the the parents of the of the kids, play some footy with them." And I just think, you know, that's it's it's nice that that followed through. You know that's I mean? nearly unheard of in many ways. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's good, but it so you know, I I think I even struggled a little bit of. <laughs> I definitely struggle a little bit with <laughs> with the uh, with the whole teacher student thing. Yeah. But <laughs> but when you get so used to calling someone sir or miss, you know, you, when you get to that age and you go, hey, these guys they're they're doing their best here. You, know. you were telling me earlier you're a big fan of impressions. I would appreciate uh, if you could uh, demonstrate your Mr. Collins impression. Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> got your bags in your box and get out of my class. <laughs> you got your hang sandwiches. You got and your he... hang sandwiches? Hmm? You got your hang sandwiches? And he's actually retired now this year as well. Yeah, again, like the. I, uh, All the legends are leaving us by. They uh, they were legends, but um, in their own right, like what was great about them on these school tours and that as a young fella and you'd be a cheeky chappy, but you turn around and you look at them, and you actually see how much crack the teachers are having when they're together. Oh yeah, they were good mates. You know that that was good. The spirit that that was good. Um, but even now, at this moment on the old box there, you're watching it on Netflix or and and there that catches your eye. Yeah, bloody! Um, I'm watching the boys. On Netflix, is it? Oh, fuck, what's it on? It's on, I think it's on Amazon Prime or something. It's a good show. Uh, it's about these, this, it's about a world where superheroes exist and everybody wants to be one. And everyone is obsessed with fame and superhero culture. It's kind of like what we were talking about. But yeah. the twist is that the superheroes are absolute assholes. Is that only new? It's brand new, yeah. It's good, it's good fun. It's this just kind of reminds me of Hancock. Will Smith. Yeah, 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 yeah. As yeah. a start, so he went good. Underrated movie, Sean. Yeah. Yeah, he was like, he was a bit of an arsehole, as you said, at the start. Yeah, yeah, then, yeah. And then, then went good. Yeah. But any, I suppose, for me, I loved, um, I loved Prison Break. Did you watch that? Jesus, I, I suddenly just forgot about Paul's question about love. <laughs> Prison Break, I saw a few episodes, yeah. 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 I thought it was top mass left. Yeah. Did you you were on about Peaky Blinders earlier? Did you get, did you get a wa- chance to watch that? That's yet? something I want to get into. Yeah, everyone is on about. Yeah, I when when people recommend it so much to me, I tend and to not watch it. And the one there like two weeks ago on television. I'm going to dive in, and yeah. Yeah, it seems seems it's a business now. Yeah, check it out looks myself. like something I love. And it. my brother actually, and I know a lot of more other people. They're all watching Power as well. I hear that's brilliant. Yes, yeah, so yeah. again, I know plenty feek and, and there's drugs involved. That's all I know, but. It's meant to be, it's meant to be brilliant. <laughs> nice That's it. I think it's the fifth or sixth season now. It's meant to be brilliant. Yeah, well, the lads were passing on this um, thing. Russell, Russell Crowe's new one, where he's had a body suit and uh, Russell Crowe by Gladiator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they've they've recommended his new one. Yeah. Did you obviously you saw Gladiator at some point. Or my, right? Yeah, one of my favorite. What a film! Brilliant, brilliant. There's talks of the second one actually. There is, yeah. Meant to be brilliant. There is. Um, there was there was a script written for a sequel a few years ago. Um, oh Jesus! I think it's meant to be about Lucius when he when he grows up, which which is kind of in itself an uh, an interesting but idea. I, I suppose it's like anything like <clears throat> if they feel that there's a story worth telling, they're gonna go for it. Like well, I can understand if you'd be a bit skeptical about it because this we're living in the age where there's so many bleeding sequels like you know and they never live up to it really don't. And do, do they have to be made but if there's a story to be told I'd, I'd be curious to see if your man Ridley Scott can get Russell Crowe to come back you know what I mean if there's some sort of way because I think they, he's saying that there has been yeah, yeah fanta- <laughs> fantastic act yeah um, just wondering like what would like you're obviously you're in the game now you're in the game there now the last few years Anyone that's up and coming now and new, 
what advice would you give to them if they wanted to, to get into an acting career like yourself more? Um, don't pay too much attention to lads or girls who don't know enough to be talking about what they're saying in, in negative terms. Yeah, don't yeah. listen to negative naysayers. Don't listen to... Um, people who say you can't do it let that fuel you let that fuel you that, am I a believer in that if you keep you know believing 100% I will get this I will get this that you're going to get it no I don't but if you're doing it for the right reasons um, let them all say what they want get into it for if you once you want to be more creative you want to open up you want to be more expressive and not so introverted. If it's that you want to collaborate with someone, or write a story, or be part of a project, or or, or play music, why would anybody? Why would you listen to anybody stopping you doing that? You know, do it for do it for yourself. <laughs> you you use a lot of big words there. Did you do honors English in school? Yeah. Did I? I don't know. Did you? Higher level English. Um. A lot of big words going there. But yeah, that's um. <laughs> That's that's but not even alone for acting. That's good advice there now for anything really. What you just alluded to there, how you could they could take that into any form, be it playing football, hurling, anything. Yeah, yeah, and you know, anything. But you, how old were you actually when you just said? And I did like English, and yeah, I did do honors. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, so did I. It was the only honor honor subject I did. And me too, believe yeah, it or not. You know, so. But how old were you actually when? You said if you use big words, fuck it, use big words. <laughs> oh yeah, go for it. But how old were you? You said you know, fuck it, I want to be an actor. Uh, I was always, Roughly. I was always toying with it, but scared of the idea, and toying with it since I. I what was great was uh, transition year, and getting to do different things outside of school, and um, I started toying with the idea then, and I. I think I did a play between the Oracle and the Brothers, um, a West Side Story thing, uh, which I enjoyed because I had a group of brothers with me and it was singing and you got to, you know, go up to the girls' school and have the crack. And it was oh, yeah. fun. You know what I mean? Have the crack. Something different. Yeah, something different. I, I was like, this is a bit of a laugh. I'm not really serious about this. But um, then, you know, it was kind of, it was fun. And I tell you... Before I made my mind up in school, what did it for me was, I used to go to the school hall and be looking forward to because you're having a bit of a dos. You're not doing any subjects because you're going to see whatever Shakespeare play they're putting on yeah, yeah. or whatever play they have decided. A break from the classroom. Yeah, yeah. I remember sitting down and going, the last thing I'd ever want to do is get up there. I'm too shy. I get slagged. I'm revealing myself. I'm revealing something that could be slagged easily. And I sit there in the auditorium. I sit there watching mates of mine get up there. And any time someone new would get on stage, you'd hear this from the audience going, it would always be from the backs back, the sixth years and the fifth years. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> And the more I listened to it, it was like, you fucking clowns. Yeah. That's what made me want to be an actor. I was like, fair fucks to these guys getting up there and being that, different. Having the balls to do it to begin with. Because otherwise we're just sheep. And that's who these guys were. These bullies in the background. Sheep. And they're everywhere, of course. Everywhere. And that was the reason. I was like, do you know what? If I'm scared of you, then I'm not fucking being true to myself. And uh, I always love film. So I just tried to combine the two of them and I sent off, you know, as I said to you, I sent off for the gaiety to do something I never did before. You spent two years there, Mo, was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How was your time there overall? Really enjoyable? Oh, I, I meant when I said it was a, <clears throat> a learning curve. And I bet you met a load of friends there, obviously. Oh, I, they're my, my, my brothers for life I met from there, you know. I, I've, um, I, yeah, I, it was a learning curve because the first year was... I'd never done anything like it before, and uh, geez, I must say you're very down to earth, lad. You're you're very, <laughs> you're, you're very humble. Like, there's not many. There's plenty of other people there now. They're kind of a big day in acting. They went to pub, 
Well, uh, doing a podcast there. Do you want to come on the show? And they're like, yeah, 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 we'll go for it. Yo. Like, even my mother and dad are like, they still didn't believe. Like, my mother wouldn't have believed until she actually saw you there in the spit track. Otherwise, she'd be like, what are you on about, you fucking idiot? <laughs> <laughs> but it's something different, boy. It's a laugh. It's a crack. Yeah. I, you know, I had a blatant laugh in in the gaiety. I, I did. It was you, you get up at six o'clock in the morning, you've class at quarter to seven, you know, you get the bus in, you come home at half six, seven o'clock at night, you're wrecked. And yeah, all I remember floating around like bleeding leaves from a tree. That was one of our <laughs> that was one of our lessons. Stand up, float around the class like your leaves floating in the wind. And I remember I remember thinking to myself, going, What is Ducey doing now? What is Blake doing? What are the boys doing? Yeah, in their colleges right now and I was like well <laughs> they're, not, they're not doing this <laughs> yeah, they're not doing what you're doing yeah, yeah, geez, like, and uh, let's be honest about it a lot of people that go for the game you're in acting more a lot of people go for it and they're unsuccessful so you should be super proud of yourself and I was, bet you your parents are just ultra, can't be any prouder of you it was it right. was good for learning confidence to stand on your own feet you know yeah. what I mean so there's, sometimes you have to put on a bit of a bravado and by Jesus, I had a bit of bravado through the years, and sometimes you you realize what's real about that and what's not. But just just bravado, yeah, just an extra security. That's a big word. I know a big word as well. Marmalade. Marmalade. <laughs> yeah, you, you you used that one in the last podcast. Uh, Hopefully we don't fuck this one up. We're gonna, I'm gonna roll this to a close now before um before the phone goes a wall again. Um, it's been a pleasure having Absolute you, Mo. Pleasure, lad. Um, hopefully, when you're back in town again, we can do it again. Um, when do you expect to be back in Dungarvan, or what's your schedule? Is just crazy, is it? No, I'll, I'll be back, and I might have a bit of quiet time and not tell anyone when I'm back. Yeah, <laughs> we might. We might even go for a pint. But I'd love to meet you again. I'd love to do this podcast with you again. And uh, man. Privilege to be the first one on your podcast. Pleasure. Yeah. You, as I said earlier, the only problem I have with you on now is it's all downhill from here. No, man. no. I t- think of a few others from town. And anyone that's listening there now as well, you were telling me there before we started recording, in about the next month or so, you did um, a series with the, a lot of the staff from Love Hate. Yeah. Tell, tell us a bit about that project. Um. <clears throat> well, you know, just getting back to Paul's question, I would have loved to being part of that but I was glad that the years that happened I got to do uh, I got to work with those actors and a different job and um, I, on a great scripted series called Dublin Murders we shot it over seven months uh, Peter Coonan's in it Tom Von Lawler Killian Scott uh, that's Nidge from Love Hate yeah, for anyone that doesn't know yeah, uh, yeah. Fran the man from Love yeah. Hate and and Fran and um, oh Tommy from Love Hate is it Tommy yeah who's who's and he's the leader of the group with with Sarah Green who I did Rosie with and um, very good the script the script the scripts are brilliant and it's a crime drama and uh, yeah it's it's nice every every now and again I can do my films and, and when is something you, comes when's that you to play uh, uh, no. I think it's next month uh, uh, November early November I would keep an eye on keep um, an eye out for that one but I mean look. When it comes to getting people on, on your show, like, be it Dungarvan or wherever, get as many people as you can. Yeah. Whatever whatever aspect of their personality makes them interested. I'm an actor, that's what I do. I'll be on the show again if you'll have me. Oh, you know? of course, we'll but have you on reach, here in number reach, two. Re- reach for as many people as possible, because you've, you've got a great way about you. You Thank know, you in, in conversational style. You nice know? to hear something positive, like no, there's enough negatives going on. There are enough <laughs> negatives going on, and I mean, I'm, I bet you this that your mates listen to this, they're delighted that you're doing this. You know what I mean? Just something different. Before we go, I have to get in some sort of text there now. Before we go, <laughs> could you just give me a Danny Dorn impression, please? <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ! <laughs> he's in my generation. He just he's a legend. <laughs> I'll take that out of the voice grip. Hey, you come over here. <laughs> Now, we'll wrap it up. Thanks very much, Mo. Thank you very much. Thank you.